Hello and welcome back to What If a Billionaire Invested in Poland? The Football Manager experiment where we give every team in Poland a billion pounds to spend and see what they do and see how they can do in the future. Now since you were last with me we have gone 10 years into the future which is a long time, we've gone 10 years uh, from 2025 to 2035 now. So we're going to go and check out the Polish uh, First Division and see exactly what's happened in those 10 years. Now the first thing to notice is that Bolotto Extra Kausa has gone down to 15th in the competition rankings in Europe. It's the 15th most reputable league in Europe. Now last time we were here we saw it at 17th and it had been up and then dropped down to 17th. It looks like it's done the same again. At some point in the last 10 years it's gone from 17th to a high of 9th. It seems to have stagnated there for a little while before dropping back down to 15th again. So I can only assume that Europe, European performances went well then went bad again. So that's probably explains why the Lotto Extra Calta is down in 15th and not in the top 10 where it should be really. Now if we go back 10 years then to the 2025 season we can see that Legia Warsaw won the league uh, from Pogon with a huge amount of points. 81 points to Pogon's 75 points which is massive. The season afterwards Legia win it again this time only by 4 points but ahead of Lecce with Pogon finishing 3rd. And the most interesting about this is Lecce have been relegated. And now actually I'm saying Lecce wrong. I was told in the last video, I was informed by uh, Kuba Krupinski that um, I'm saying plenty of things wrong. So Lecce actually, if I'm being proper, is pronounced Le, I think. I think that's how I'm saying it. If, if I'm wrong, please, please do correct me again, Kuba. But he's left me a little list of things to say which are uh, slightly different in Polish and to English. Um, which is going to be hard for me to remember. I've got the list here in front of me, but I think I'm going to let you down, mate. I'm sorry. I just can't do it. I'm just not a Polish native speaker, so it's going to be a bit hard for me. But Let or Lech have been relegated this season, which is absolutely mental. So one of the big teams we thought were going to do quite well have been relegated. That's mental. The season afterwards, Legia win it again, this time only by two points from Pogon. But even more crazy, uh, Jagin Elia, who have been a staple part of the top five, really, in Poland for the past couple of seasons and the past few experiments, have been relegated uh, with 12 points. So two of the big names have been relegated, which is a bit crazy, really. Season after that, once again, Legia Warsaw winning it. They have a bit of a dynasty going on at the moment. I don't think they're going to be toppled. 78 points, leading from Slask with 57 points, and Pogon finishing third. Uh, interestingly as well, Let have not been promoted again this se the season before, so obviously they couldn't get promoted from the uh, second division, which is pretty poor. 29-30 season, five years in the future from last time. Legia win it again. They just seem to absolutely dominate. We'll have a look at their transfers in a minute and see some of their best players, but... Legia are doing some amazing stuff. Season after that, they win it again. 76 points from Pogon, finishing with 63 points. Pogon seems to be pretty staple coming second. They seem to be the second best team. Lecce have sort of dropped down a little bit recently. They're not doing too well. But Let or Lecce have been promoted again. So at least they get back in this league. Uh, but but Jaginelli just have not got back promoted yet still, which is a bit of a worry. Finally, for the first time in what seems like a long time, Legia have been knocked off the top spot, finishing fourth with Slask winning it. Where did they finish in the championship group, though? Uh, Legia managed to get themselves back to third, so they weren't in the Champions League this time round. But Slask have managed to win the league, which is amazing. Finally, another team that's not Legia winning it. In the 32-33 season, Slask win it again with Legia finishing third. So maybe Legia have been knocked off the top spot. Let have also been relegated once again, which isn't great. Ruh have also been relegated uh, with a grand total of 13 points. That's not great. Uh, Lecce have also finished down in 14th. They managed to avoid relegation somehow. They had a good relegation group at battle, I suppose. But it's worrying how these two teams have been down here and Jaginelli have been relegated and still not come back up. And yet Legia have also managed to survive the test of time and... It kind of shows what this billion pounds does. It sort of allows anyone to become a you know a, a huge team. So unfortunately for these two, they've just dropped down. A season afterwards, though, Legia have won the league again with a huge points total of 82 ahead of Pogon on 63, on 66 rather. Brookbeck Temarulka have come third actually. I've not seen I've seen them up there a little bit, but not as high as third. I don't think. And Slaska, the previous winners, finishing down in fourth this time, so missing out on uh, Champions League football. And then the season we have just had, Pogon won the league, actually, but Legia Warsaw came in second in the group, but in the championship group, they managed to change hands and win it. And that's the first time we've seen it. Every time we've looked at this, a champion has been the team that has won the league overall. So this time is like the first time in the last 10 years or so that a team who didn't come top in the, in the normal table has won the championship group instead. So Legia and Pogon going to the Champions League with Slask, Arka and Brook, Bet Temeroka coming into the Europa League. 
a quick look at transfers and see the kind of money that's being spent. Uh, the biggest transfer, this it's all regions now as well, basically, so there's not names we're going to recognise. We'll check out a few of these big ones if there's a big transfer fee in, but... 23 million, the biggest one in this season, the 2025-26 season. Uh, Legia spending quite a bit of money, as they seem to do. They seem to really splash the cash recently, and they're doing it again with the biggest transfer of 22 rises of 30 million this season. Pogon spending big in the 27-28 season. This is where they suddenly start to get a bit of a rise, buying a lot of players from other Polish teams, actually. Slert, Spartak Moscow in there, but a lot of them come from other Polish sides. Legia then spending quite a bit of money this season. Three of the four biggest transfers are all Legia, but Pogon spending the most 27 million for a guy from Standard Liège. Transfers seem to have settled down a little bit from the 20 to 30 million kind of range. Uh, Legia Warsaw spending 22 million this season on a player from Dynamo Kiev. Uh, 53 million, though, is spent uh, actually by Liverpool for a player from Legia. Is he any good, this guy? I mean, it was a good couple of years ago now, so he may have moved on from Liverpool and may not actually be that good. Um, he looks like he's pretty decent to me. He scored a lot of goals for Italy. Uh, let's have a look at his just career ratings. And he's done, you know, his average ratings are fantastic, to be fair. So he's a Freiburg youth player, came in uh, for 18 million to Legia Warsaw, and they sold him on for a big profit margin to the Premier League, and he's played brilliantly in there. So I guess he's a bit of a superstar. Legia obviously used that money, though, to spend 39 million on uh, a player from Zenit, Mario Paula. Is he any good? He's still at Legia, that's the most important thing. He's still there, but in the Legia second team at 34 years old, not valued at much. His stats obviously have dropped down a little bit because he's 34, but did he have a good career at Legia? He had quite a good career, I'm not going to lie to you. You know, big 7.9 7 with his worst rating, and that seems like he came in January maybe. But he's not played that many games, so I think he was a pretty decent signing. Season after that, 30 million spent by Pogon. In fact, Pogon making some big transfers this season. They're really up there, along with Slask. Legia Warsaw actually are not seen on there at all, apart from selling players. So they must have just started not to spend money that year, or maybe they were just like banned from it. I don't know. They um, they sold a player, though, for 30 million to Real Madrid for next season and uh, didn't really. Well, they spent another 30 million on three of the players. So kind of a, a good deal for them, I suppose, there. 33 34 season, Pogon, the big spenders this year. They seem to have sort of sorted their finances out, buying a lot of players from leg gear, actually, well, two, actually. One of them went to Gangzo. I thought that was to Pogon as well, actually. Uh, but they buy a player from Pogon, do leg gear. So we're sort of trading players around a little bit, which is a bit interesting to see. Uh, and then the season, we have just had Pogon being the biggest spender. 33 million on a player from Arca. Are they in the Polish side? I think they are. I recognise the name. A bit stupid if it wasn't now, but yeah, they are. They came fourth this past season in... So being a little bit ambitious now, we're going to look at the Champions League and go to the first knockout round. I don't think a Polish side has made it this far yet in the Champions League, which is a bit annoying considering how much money we've put into them. But we're going to go through the last 10 years and see if a team has made it there. In those first 25-26 season, there's no Polish sides. The season afterwards, no Polish sides. This is probably going to be a bit of a trend going on. I say that, Pogon have made the first knockout round of the Champions League, but lost 2-0 to Real Madrid on aggregate after... Drawing the first leg, to be fair, which is pretty decent. So they played well. They were just a bit unlucky in the second leg by looks of things. But well done to Pogon. Season after that, no teams making it there, though. But at least we've had one now, uh, which is quite nice. Legia Warsaw make it in to the first knockout round in the 2029-30 in the season. They lose 3-1 to Real Madrid on aggregate. So they were narrowly beaten there, really. But that's a good result for them. And it's nice to see a Polish side there again. 30-31 season, not a Polish side there. And uh, again in the 31-32 season, the season afterwards, the season afterwards, Slask make it there, but another lock, but also knocked out as the other teams before them were. This time 3-0 to Real Madrid. Managed to get a 0-0 draw in the second leg, but lost the first leg 3-0. Season afterwards, I'm afraid no Polish sides there. And then in the season we have just had, there's no Polish sides there either. But it's nice to see that there are some teams getting there and... We're finally starting to see some results from this, you know, billion pounds being put there. Hopefully in the next couple of years, we'll start to see teams getting into the, the later stages, but they might need a bit more money put into the league to do that. We're going to do the same thing now for the Europa League, and as you can see in the 25-26 season, there are no Polish sides there, unfortunately, which is a bit of a shame. We would have thought that maybe they'd make some progress in this competition, but Pogon do get into the first knockout round and beat Dinamo Kiev 2-1 on aggregate in the 26-27 season. So if we go to the second knockout round, let's have a look. They beat Olympiakos. That's big. They beat them 4-3 on aggregate with a big 2-0 win in the second leg, which is fantastic. Coming back from a, the term at tie around like that, actually. 
they win the quarterfinals against Celtic 3-2, so they're doing really well, actually, Pogon. If Pogon go on to win this, this will be amazing. Semi-finals, though, they get knocked out, losing 6-0 on aggregate to Inter Milan. So that's unlucky, but it's great to see a Polish side getting this far in a European competition. 27-28 season now, and... I can't see a Polish side there, which is a little bit unfortunate after last season's success. But I think this was a season when we saw Pogon in the Champions League first knockout round, which is great. Season after that, again, no Polish sides there, which is a little bit unlucky. Um, it's just frustrating, really. You kind of think you'd see some teams here. In the 2029 season, though, two teams make it. Pogon are there once again, beating Napoli 4-2 on aggregate. Slask, though, lose 4-0 to Chelsea on aggregate. But at least Pogon make it through again to the second knockout round where they lose to Sporting 3-1 on aggregate, which is a bit unlucky, but at least they're getting there again. We're starting to get a little bit further. I'd like to see a bit more progress, though. 30-31 season, Slaska there again, but they lose to Wolfsburg 3-0 on aggregate, and I can't see any Polish teams there, unfortunately. Um, no, there's not. So just Slask that season and get into the first knockout round. Season afterwards, Slaska there once again, but they lose 3-1 to um, Marseille this time, which is again annoying. Slash getting there, but just not being able to do anything about it. 32-33 season, and Legia Warsaw are there, but they lose 3-0 to Marseille. Again, another team losing to Marseille in the first knockout round, which is a bit unfortunate. No other Polish teams. Oh, I, I lied to you. Pogon are there, but they lose 3-2 to Genk, which are the team they should be beating, really. You know, the, the Belgian league and the Polish league in this kind of day and age. In the 2033 season, they're probably quite similar, so it's Annoying to see Pogon lose to them like that. 33-34 season, Pogon overcome Everton 1-0, which is a great result for them. They've uh, managed to get into the second knockout round once again. They're the only Polish team there. Second knockout round, though. And they beat Roma, actually. 3-1 on aggregate. That's really big for them. If they go to the quarterfinals, they lose to Borussia Mönchengladbach 6-0 on aggregate. So, at least they're getting there. Pogon being the best team in Europe we've seen, I think. They've done the most. They've come the closest to winning anything and have got to the furthest rounds uh, the most times. So that's great for them. And then the season we have just had Legia Warsaw there, which is great to see, but unfortunately Pogon or Slask are not. Legia win though, 4-2 against Olympiacos. So they go in the second knockout round where they lose to Marseille. Another team losing to Marseille. Marseille being a bit of the uh, the Polish beaters, to be fair. They beat them 2-1 on aggregate. Pretty unlucky there. Legia winning the second leg 1-0, but... Unfortunately, lost the first leg 2-0, so it wasn't to be. So as you can see, there's a bit of progress, but unfortunately, no winners yet. So let me know in the comments when you think a Polish side are going to win a European competition. If you've enjoyed the video, then please do leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Join me for the next episode, which is going to be in a couple of days' time. I'm away for a little bit now, so it may vary when this next episode is going to come out. So just bear with me, but another one will come out, and we're going to see exactly what happens to the Polish teams.